Now this season was a little more difficult than usual partially because of the significant amount of sarin dust that we saw in the atmosphere. So give us a little insight as to from the Met Office's perspective of course what that meant not just what it looked like because we saw it and we felt it too. Let me just say this very quickly. I made a statement about Guyana right which I was jokingly saying it on a podcast. Mm -hmm. The whole, whole of Guyana has taken, taken this up on their head and took it offensive and serious. Knows that, right? India used to be called long, long, long time ago, Eastern Ethiopia. Everybody knows that, right? But we had to have hope and faith that America would receive us, for us to cross over and work. But in America, the issue is deepening the divide between Democrats and Republicans. The Republican-dominated state of Texas, where most migrants initially arrive, will soon allow its police officers to arrest any incoming migrants, a direct challenge to federal law. Many people are not sympathetic want to thank you for making it this far in the video but could you please take a few seconds if you haven't already to drop us a like it really helps to promote this content in the algorithm and if you haven't subscribed already hit the subscribe button it costs you nothing and you'll be able to have a notification every time we drop content like this i'll wait thanks right back into the content knows that right india used to be called long 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 time ago eastern ethiopia everybody knows that right no yes okay yes 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 <laughs> you also probably heard there is a big river in india called ganges okay to be frank, till two years back, I did not know what the meaning of the word Ganges. I simply know Ganges is Ganges. Do you know the name Ganges is one of the strongest and famous emperors of Ethiopia? That's right. Do you think uh, some crazy Aryans would name a big river in India after an Af African uh, emperor? Or not. Simple logic says that. Same people, same ancestry. And if you look at the screen right now, you'll see. Look, some of the same parts that they would blow off on the ancient statues, on them angels, on the ancient sculptures, so that you won't be able to see the resemblance. The similar traits, the nose, the lips, the forehead. You could see. I didn't make these pictures up. I didn't make that history up. You could see the similarities in the pictures and the history is there. The history cannot be revoked or reversed. Every year in Guyana, we celebrate Indian arrival right and when we celebrate indian arrival that's us reminding ourselves of our rich rich culture rich history because guyanese share ancestry with king selassie guyanese have the same ancestry as king selassie because India is Ethiopia. That's the history. That's what it is. So Guyana is not just one of the richest countries in the world because of our oil wealth and because of our carbon credits wealth, but because of our rich heritage as well. Guyanese has the same ancestry as King Selassie the same roots in Ethiopia and that alone 
is empowering and just shows you how important it is to study and to understand history because when you get that grasp of history it gives you the directive as to how to move forward in the present because you have a more rounded perspective of self so why then is there so much fight between so-called Indians and so-called Blacks in Guyana when we all come from a similar ancestry if India is Ethiopia and, in, and Ethiopia is a part of the continent of Africa then with all this tribal brotherly war that we going on with while persons gain off of us by playing two sides to the center we gotta wisen up and realize that we are brothers and sisters in that land that's so big that it has so much space left over even when the Guyanese that are there now are able to inherit parts for themselves now that we know this and know that this information has been there for years and years and we're now remembering parts of our heritage we're supposed to step in our power right now and live in a more unified love because we know the heritage and every year we celebrate it and our culture is rich our country is rich let's have a conversation about this in the comment section if i my balance was like magic i was just home all right if you know what right, i'm going to say this mr grant let me yeah. say this very quickly i can relate to what mr taylor is saying because a lot of times things can be perceived the wrong way mm -hmm. okay because let, let me just say this very quickly i made a statement about guyana right which i was jokingly saying it on a podcast mm -hmm. the whole, whole of guyana has taken taking this up on their head and took it offensive and seriously so i understand where mr Ta mr taylor is coming from because sometimes we would say things that we really don't <clears throat> really are saying jokingly or whatever the case yeah like joking and people will take it seriously so the holiday season is a time of spreading love cheer and a time of forgiveness gt guyanese are we ready to forgive our brother major hype for the things that he said earlier this year are we ready to let bygones be bygones and just let it be a joke as he said it was just something that he was saying in jest it wasn't nothing to be taken seriously it wasn't nothing for us to respond in the way that we did even though some of us might feel like yeah bro you was getting out of pocket and we really needed to respond in the way that we responded but from my perspective I mean, I could look and I could see where he was making a joke, but then in some parts you could see where the joke went a little bit too far. And I'm wondering to myself right now, because we are at the end of the year, and I said to myself, yo, we're going to close up this wound and just move on and, you know, let this situation just, you know, come to a close. Or are we still holding on to the fact that, hey, he said he says so, you know, He's still in the bad page or he's still in a situation where you know he's not welcome to say certain things or to make certain joke but gt people know more because of what he just said and to top it off even more like a little after he said them things there about gt and the fact that the way that he said it made us feel in a particular way then a little bit after the look look what happened with venezuela and all of that stuff so with that being like an icing on the cake with the foolishness, right? Is GT ready to just look at the situation and say, all right, we, we forgive 
and we moving on and we turning a new leaf for the new year. Me, from my perspective, I would say, yeah, I good. I ain't holding no grudge. And I could laugh again at any one of the jokes or any one of these skits them because some of them is very funny even though that one wasn't very funny but it depends sometimes because you see when the joke is about somebody else everybody's laughing and kick kick it right but when the joke is about you it don't be that funny sometimes right but the general question is do we want to have a conversation about in the comment section are we as Guyanese ready to bury the hatchet, let it go, water under the bridge, show forgiveness when it comes down to major hype? Let's have a conversation about it in the comment section. From Venezuela is more focused on her Barbie doll than the barbed wire she's about to cross to get into America. Every day, migrants lock arms and brave the fast-moving current of the Rio Grande River to cross over from Mexico before they take that very last step. They are muddy, exhausted, hungry, some crying, but most relieved as they turn themselves in to the U.S. Border Patrol. Are you happy? Okay. Happy, happy. <laughs> Nearly 3 million migrants crossed the southern border in 2023, a record amount. 13,000 in one day alone this month. And more are coming from farther away, in particular Venezuela, making a treacherous 5,000 kilometer trek through jungles, on top of trains, and across the river. They say they just can't survive at home, economically or literally. I had to flee. The gangs killed my mother, father, and family. They have hurt us too much. In a factory, I make $6 a month. It's very hard. You're not able to buy anything with that. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I wasn't certain. want to thank you for making it this far in the video. But could you please take a few seconds, if you haven't already, to drop us a like. It really helps to promote this content in the algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button it costs you nothing and you'll be able to have a notification every time we drop content like this oh yeah. thanks right back into the content but we had to have hope and faith that america would receive us for us to cross over and work but in america the issue is deepening the divide between democrats and republicans the republican dominated state of texas where most migrants initially arrive will soon allow its police officers to arrest any incoming migrants a direct challenge to federal law many people are not sympathetic they know this is a land of freebies. What would you say to these people who are crossing right now in front of us? Look, uh, one thing is why don't you stay home and fix your country? This year, Texas started busing tens of thousands of migrants from its overcrowded border towns to far away big liberal cities like New York and dumping them there. New York's mayor, Eric Adams, has declared a state of emergency. So exasperated by strained resources and overcrowded shelters, that he's offering migrants one-way plane tickets to go anywhere else in the world. The Biden administration has tried to ease the crisis by granting some amnesty for thousands of Venezuelan immigrants, and the administration is still deporting thousands each week. But it's Congress that establishes long-term border policy. Late in the year, Republicans in Congress used the border crisis as a controversial bargaining chip, saying they would only approve new military funding for Ukraine and Israel if the White House agreed to their demands for tougher border restrictions. But all that political squabbling is lost on the migrants still pouring in, with the fear of staying in their home countries greater than the fear of making this trip. Andy Rosjum, TRT World. The immigration situation is getting crazy. In most parts of the world that is prone to a lot of immigration, this situation is getting crazy. Persons from New York will tell you. Persons from Miami will tell you. Persons from Texas and those regions that get a lot of immigration would tell you how crazy it is right now. 
but we still see that a lot of the borders and a lot of the flow of immigrants is still rampant in a lot of these places and every day the persons that are living there the persons that were there before the flow of immigrants came that is presently coming in right now they can tell you that everything is getting more crowded more dirty more expensive and the situation is getting worse and worse so persons are now creating so much of a ruckus that texas is saying you know what we're going to give our police force the authority to arrest illegal immigrants in the street and deal with them as if they were breaking the law now how crazy is that because it goes against the federal ordinances and nowhere else in the country is doing that right now but texas is taking a bold approach and saying look if so much of them could come across the border and invade our state technically then we gotta deal with it to make sure that our citizens are safe we gotta make sure that our constituencies are safe and we gotta make sure that we protect our infrastructure from this large influx of people what is a small country and a small economy even though it's booming and the largest i'll find in the world what is guyana doing to safeguard itself from this situation that new york is saying look we can't sustain this Guyana that is so close to Venezuela that they have a border dispute and there's so many Venezuelans coming across the borders every day. What is Guyana doing to combat that illegal immigrant situation that is going to change Guyana in ways we don't even know right now. We can't even see right now or fathom right now. We never had this large influx of immigrants yet in recent times so how are we able to gauge how this will affect the country in 15 years in 10 years in five years this is something that is foreign to us technically and pun intended it's definitely foreign to us right and we're looking at this situation i think in a unique way if you observe the way that the rest of the world is treating this immigrant situation and these large number of persons pouring into the country even now the new york mayor is realizing it because you know why in the video upcoming we're going to share some insight as to what's going on in new york right now with the immigrant situation and just how hectic that's becoming for one of the most richest states in the entire United States. And they're saying, we can't take any more of this. It's draining our pockets. It's draining our infrastructure. It's becoming a burden to the state. We can no longer do it. If New York is saying that, how is Guyana able to sustain that large influx of immigrants coming across its borders what is Guyana doing to make sure that the situation that's going on in New York does not become the same thing in Guyana let's have a conversation about this in the comment section guys let's talk about this situation that is very pressing all over the world let's have an educated conversation about this in the comment section and it's not about oh this person must go or that person must go but it's just about ways that we as the persons that are gonna have to live and interact how are we going to deal with the changes that are coming in five ten years because this immigrant situation is not gonna go away and it's gonna change the country forever not just new york 
but Guyana as well. Let's have a conversation in the comment section. Good morning and welcome back to the Now Morning Show, where, as promised, we are tackling that dust in the air. <laughs> I anchor here alongside Rokas and we are joined by meteorologist Gary Benjamin to give us some insight into the battle that we are facing against the Saharan dust. So good morning, Mr. Benjamin. Good morning, a pleasant good morning to you, to all your guests, listeners and viewers. Compliments of the season. Uh, compliments to you too and everybody else. Warm compliments. Now, this season was a little more difficult than usual, partially because of the significant amount of sand dust that we saw in the atmosphere. So give us a little insight as to, from the Met Office's perspective, of course, what that meant, not just what it looked like, because we saw it and we felt it too. Okay, um, well, we know that um, a significant plume of Saharan dust would have passed um, Trinidad and Tobago, across Trinidad and Tobago over the, the, the last weekend, the Christmas weekend, and it is somewhat continuing. The, the most intense part of it, the peak of it, past uh, Saturday into Sunday, reducing visibilities as low as um, four and a half kilometers, or maybe even lower in some areas. Uh, the, the intensity of it is beginning to lessen somewhat as, as the days go by. Um, last night I checked, the visibility was up to about 16 kilometers as far as the um, perspective of Piaco observing station is concerned. But we expect it to drop again with another plume of Saharan dust coming in sometime over the coming weekend, maybe Saturday into Sunday. Wow. So, Mr. Benjamin, can you give us a, a bit of an idea as to how this dust even gets across here and why does it keep coming? Well, um, the dust is always in the atmosphere. It never really goes away, it's just the amount the concentrations of it would change from time to time. Usually, you would have high concentrations from the spring in the Northern Hemisphere, spring to the autumn, that is from about April to around October, November. That is when we get most outbreaks of dust. Um, but um, it comes from the Saharan Desert, of course. Um, the Saharan Desert is a massive area of sand, and there are basically two uh, mechanisms that, that has to bring the dust across from us. One is that there is something over the African continent that would lodge the dust into the air, some wind event, and as it is lodged into the air, it is taken up by, by into the Saharan air layer through the African easterly jet and brought across the Atlantic to our area. It is a regular phenomenon, it never goes away, but as I said, within certain times of the year, it is more, more of the events occur than at other times. Mr. Benjamin, we have been experiencing this for quite some time. It's been over a year now, perhaps, right? Is there any, any yes. insight? <laughs> no, the, the, as I said, the dust never really goes away. What happens, it, 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 it reduces in, in um, concentrations as it comes across. Sometimes it is hardly noticeable if we have lots of um, weather, like precipitation washing it out, so to speak. If there's not settling across the Atlantic, we may have limited amounts coming across to us but it never really goes away it is always in the atmosphere in different concentrations sometimes you don't notice you don't really notice it and at other times it is very noticeable like now very very interesting you know mr benjamin because um well i i always wonder like if it's coming over the ocean how come it doesn't disintegrate on the way here or no rain particles doesn't bother it from you know landing here in trinidad and tobago i find that i find that very interesting how does it work exactly I know you mentioned that it, it, well, it, if there's something happens and it comes across, but how come along the way it doesn't break down at all? Well, um, as it leaves the African continent and gets into the atmosphere, gets into the train of, of the African easterly jet into the Saharan area, it goes across a relatively, I say relatively cooler layer, surface layer on the ocean, over the, um, the surface of the Atlantic Ocean. Because this area is, is cooler relative to the very hot air and dust coming out of the Sahara, the Saharan area would, would, would float, so for want of a better word, or it will move or travel above that layer across the ocean. And because it is caught up in an African or an easterly jet of strong winds, it will tend to sustain, so the settling velocity would not be as much because it would have more 
forward velocity than downward velocity. And sometimes if we have lots of precipitation, the precipitation can win out and sometimes the dust can win out. It's always mm -hmm. a fight for supremacy and balance in the atmosphere. Wow. A lot of physics and a lot of science taking place there, ultimately being a situation of current and normal flus that will see a lot of us with sinus problems, respiratory problems, essentially battling through this. What sort of precautionary methods or protective measures we can take to navigate this better? Well, um, we, as I said, we can't really stop it when it outbreaks, but um, those persons who are uh, are ailing with or are suffering from certain types of respiratory ailments would of course know what they have to do as far as visiting their uh, medical practitioners and they would take the advice from their own medical practitioners who would know the, the type of ailment they have but the fact is that you should have your medication around at all times mm -hmm. some people may not have any particular um, ailment like myself but sometimes when it does gets to be severe um, a lot of people would have certain um, um, uh, physical responses to it as far as sneezing, coughing, feeling it in your throat sometimes. So what you have to do is, is to try to um, stay, out, stay out of the dust, you can hardly stay out of it, but right. try to get drink, drink your water, try, try not to um, exert yourself outside in the dust, you know, and, and just basically stay as calm as possible. If you feel that your body is reacting to it in any adverse way, of course you need to see your medical practitioner. Uh, right, so we're staying calm, we're staying inside. But before we start the interview, you mentioned some mechanisms moving forward that would be employed. And I wasn't clear on whether or not that was for individuals, we as a people, or the Met Office moving forward to navigate this. What are we doing in the future? Oh, the men first of all, the mechanisms I mentioned was was the, 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 the mechanisms for lifting the dust into the air and, and of course then the Saharan air layer would take it across the Atlantic so it's a, a two-phase type, type of something. As far as the Met Office, um, what are we doing in the future? Well, we have over the past year, we have tried to make ourselves and our information as visible as possible. We have tried to put our information out there so that people would have accurate and timely information, accurate, scientifically accurate information, and, and timely information so that um, we have um, social media platforms where we will be out on, and we also have our website, which is www.metoffice.gov.tt. We also have our app that you can uh, download, the Trinidad and Tobago Met Office app, so you could get um, warning and, and, and adverse, adverse um, recaps and, and things like that on your phone as you go. So we, over the past couple of years, have been, and I'm sure you have noticed it, have been trying to be in contact with the, the, the media, the press. We have also been trying to be in contact on different social media platforms because we understand that different peoples, different demographics would want to use different platforms. We try to be out there as much as possible. And it is our hope um, that you will take up our invitation to look at our different platforms constantly because the weather is always changing. So look at them constantly for updates, whichever platform you may prefer to use. Mr. Benjamin, I must say thank you, uh, not just for joining us this morning, but for those constant updates, because I have noticed uh, a marked improvement in the communication coming out from you guys, and I would say that uh, it's been very, very helpful, because lots of people were warned previously about the Saharan that's coming this weekend, so they were able to be as prepared as possible. So thank you guys for the work that you've been doing, the constant improvements, and we look forward to continuous updates. Now, this story is very interesting. Because after the red or orange sky summer that we had in the United States this past summer here where you had the skies in New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and a, a number, Jersey and a number of other close lying states that was affected by what they said was the fires that was going on in Canada and California. 
that caused the sky to be so polluted with the dust and smoke that it blocked out the sun and it caused it to have a tint or a color of almost red in some places and orange in other places and you could literally smell the smoke like a burning bush and stuff like that and you could smell the smoke and you could see the ash in some places now that was bad but then now I'm looking at and I'm seeing the same situation happening with dust this time though. Not a fire but dust coming from the Sahara and coming all the way over to Trinidad. And Trinidad is only one hour away from Guyana. So Guyana now should be on a watch for what's coming their way with these winds and this dust that they're speaking about. Because look. When it originally started, we weren't paying no attention to it much because we up in the mountains, right? So we saying, hey, they're not gonna bother me. But eventually, you know what? The skies was red in our area as well too. So this thing with this dust traveling far distances and affecting persons, it's becoming very weird and rampant these days. It's almost making me wonder if there's some conspiracy going on to pollute the air and affect persons' lungs. Because I'm saying to myself, how would dust get all the way from the Sahara to Trinidad? It's almost unbelievable at some point. But you say to yourself, look, it's not everything you and I might completely understand about nature and the way that things move, right? But dust all the way from the Sahara affecting persons in Trinidad, and I'm pretty sure some of that dust is going to filter over to parts of Guyana because by one hour away by flight, you could tell me if they got so much dust that travel all the way to, to, from the Sahara, some is not going to make it over another hour over in places like Guyana and parts of the coastal region in that, in that vicinity. It might. What do you guys think about that though? The dust. Not just in New York and different parts of the US as well, but in Trinidad. What's going on in, on in 2023? It's crazy, man. Do you guys think that this is a natural disaster as they're claiming? Or you think it's something more that they're not telling us about this? Let's have a conversation about this in the comment section. Dust from the Sahara affecting persons in Trinidad. Just like the dust from the fire all the way in Canada was affecting us in New York City. Man... We really need to talk about this, man. Educated conversation. Real, grown person conversation. Because this world is changing in ways that we couldn't foresee. If somebody did tell me this three years ago that dust would blow from the Sahara and affect people in Trinidad and possibly Guyana, I used to say, buddy, something wrong with my head or something. But it's an actual thing. And persons are dealing with it. So now we got to face this head on. And try to understand what's really going on in this world. And how we could stay healthy. Throughout this entire ordeal. Because as was mentioned. Persons are feeling ill. From the excess amount of dust. So look out Guyana. And make sure that you safeguard yourself. Even though. I wouldn't advise no one to stay out of the sun because vitamin D is very very important and one thing Guyana has a lot of is vitamin D from that sunlight so stay safe and look out for the dust if any coming to Guyana